from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering Cloud Foundry Summit 2018. Brought to you by the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's coverage of Cloud Foundry Summit 2018. Always excited when we get to talk to some of the users. And joining me for this segment is Adam Furtado, who is the Chief of Product with Kessel Run at US Air Force. Uh, Adam, you were saying you're not a big Star Wars guy, but uh, you know, is, was the name come from the derivation of you know, the, the famous Millennium Falcon Kessel Run? Yes, I am a Star Wars geek. Yeah, you know? It certainly was, and uh, the rest of our team are Star Wars nuts, so I've, been, uh, I've had to pick up things along the way. So I like to joke that we're delivering capability to our users uh, in 12 parsecs or, or, or quicker. So. Yeah, and, and if you're not a, if, if, whether you are or aren't a Star Wars fan, you look at it and say, uh, parsecs is a measure of distance, not time. Right. So, um, you know, that, that's still infuriating for, 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 for <laughs> us to, to watch. But sure. uh, Adam, tell us a little bit about your background and, you know, what your group does at the U.S. Air Force. I think we don't need to explain the U.S. Air Force. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so my background is actually as an intelligence professional. I was a, a warfighter enlisted in the Air Force for 10 years. Uh, from there, I started working in uh, IT systems when I got out of the Air Force um, and really was uh, on the acquisition side of the house where we were the provider for capabilities for our warfighters. Um, and so over that time, learned a lot about uh, how we struggled in getting capability to our users in any, with any kind of speed or, or, or quality. So um, Kessel Run is an effort to revolutionize the way that we build and deliver software to our warfighters. Um, and we are uh, well on our way. That Sounds like an awesome project. That's so can, can you give us just roughly, you know, like how do you get your arms around how big this is, how many applications or people involved in it, or you know, the, you know, the scope of what you're doing? Sure, so uh, we set out to uh, modernize the Air and Space Operations Center. So we have uh, AOCs all around the, the world that basically are where all the planning for uh, air warfare takes place. Uh, so there's a large uh, legacy system uh, that uh, is, you know, underlines that. Uh, so they've really struggled in modernizing that baseline system. Uh, we've been designing a brand new system to modernize for about 10 years and we just haven't been able to get it to the field for a, a ton of DOD bureaucratic and acquisitions reasons. Um, so basically, Congress told us to figure something new out. So we have a small team that was tired of working this way and tired of not being able to provide this capability to warfighters, got together, um, and we looked at industry, to be quite frank, and found that the other bureaucratic, regulated industries were able to uh, take steps to move you know, closer towards their digital transformation. Uh, so we kind of followed along uh, and took some practices that we learned from them um, and tried to apply it to the government. Yeah. Uh Fascinating space, uh, you know, government's big focus this week at the show, there was the announcement about mm -hmm. cloud.gov, mm -hmm. um, there is a whole track uh, on government here, but I want you to talk about your Cloud Foundry usage, but in general, you know, how's the thinking of, you know, modernization, digital, digitization, there was a big cloud first initiative uh, from the federal government for uh, a while, how do those forces play together? Sure, into what yeah, there's, on? I mean, there's a ton of, uh, innovation type of uh, activities taking place throughout the government and the DOD. Uh, with Cloud Foundry, we just found that um, because of our, we, we frankly have a lack of software development engineering talent that's inherent to the Air Force. Uh, we have actually a career field for software developers that's been dwindling over the years. Uh, so being able to find that talent has been really hard. So with uh, Cloud Foundry or any commercial platform, being able to abstract the technical complexity that it does allows us to uh, grow our software developers uh, in a different way, focusing on identifying uh, the character traits and uh, you know, the empathy and learning mindset that we can uh, take and grow them from uh, by having that like platform as a backbone to kind of uh, be our foundation, I guess, is really was the impetus of us going in this direction, uh, and it's really worked out so far. Yeah, it's going through my head are all these discussions we've had for years about we need to go from monolithic hierarchical to distributed architectures, and that's been happening in the military a lot too. Very much so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what we're what we're trying to replace is is that is that massive monolithic um, system that you know. Uh, takes us 10 years to uh, design and develop with no meaningful user input. And at the end of the day, if we even get it out to the field, uh, it's not the right thing. So 96% uh, of federal IT projects are over budget or over schedule. Uh, and 40% of them never see a user at all, never get fielded. So um, there's a lot of room for improvement in this space. So we've been able to kind of uh, tackle some of the uh, some of the easier things, but also tackle some more, co tackle some more complex things. Uh, it's not only the technology, but uh, the you know, the policy and the testing and the security behind that as well that we've been kind of focusing on uh, to, you know, uh, move the entire DOD, entire Air Force forward. Yeah, um, 
So security, I would think, is you know a major concern. How does that fit into uh, your, your thinking, and uh, you know how how does security fit into your architecture? Uh, we're always thinking about security. Cybersecurity is obviously um, uh, really important to the DoD in our space. Um, but we feel that uh, with being able to automate more of the security with uh, utilizing a platform and the pipelines that we have uh, gets us in a better place. We're more secure today than we were yesterday. Uh, we're always learning too, right? So we, we were more secure today than we were literally yesterday. And we're going to be more secure tomorrow uh, by learning how to um, you know, kind of move forward and, and learn more about uh, cybersecurity. But um, it's always something on our mind and we feel like we're in a good place with it. Yeah, uh, the majority of Cloud Foundry users are doing really their, their private or private hosted uh, kind of environment. Can you share, do you leverage public clouds at all? Is it all kind of in-house data centers? How does that fit into the mix? So our unclassified developments is the AWS GovCloud. Right. Um, and then uh, we have uh, hybrid solutions that we use uh, on other networks. Right. Okay. Yeah, AWS just launched. I believe it's their their secret uh, uh, region too, so that they're they're capable. But I guess your team or you can't talk about isn't leveraging it yet. <laughs> uh, rather not go there. I guess. <laughs> uh, no worries. So you're speaking at the show. You know what? Yeah. What's your experience? What what kind of things are you sharing and, and working on? Uh, really heavily relying on culture. So we had a couple of our team members uh, speak this morning, giving more of an overview of like our effort and what we've been able to achieve so far. Um, and I'm focusing on uh, how we can um, uh, overcome some of the challenges that are in that's inherent to the DoD. Like we mentioned earlier, uh, native engineering and development talent. Um, how we can uh, change the way that we do organizational management. Uh, our traditional hierarchical, uh, top-down way of um, organizing is not uh, doesn't breed innovation normally, right? So we're looking at different ways to organize our own organ uh, our own um, team. So one of those ways is all of our dev, dev teams work in a balanced team concept with no uniforms, all on a first name basis. So we're basically taking, uh, you know, uniforms are really to strip the individual, uh, individualism away from people, uh, but we kind of need that for creativity and to be able to solve complex problems and things like that. So we're really focusing on uh, lifting the psychological safety needed to uh, be creative and have our lowest ranking people feel as comfortable as our highest ranking people in ideating and coming up with the ways to do things. Yeah, that, that's fascinating, actually. You, you, you think about, uh, you know, just, we've been talking a lot about relationships between the groups and the, the devs and the operators, but you, you start putting rank in there, which any company mm -hmm. has some of that inherently, but the right. military, you know, very much is visible when you, you see them all the time. Right? Uh, absolutely, and uh, it, it's actually, our, our airmen have really adapted to it and they love it. Uh, it's one of those things where it's, it's interesting, maybe a little bit different than commercial industry in that uh, our airmen are developers and our airmen are also our users. So there's like, there is invested uh, interest in, in improving things for the better for their, you know, their fellow airmen to, um, so it, it's been really great to see and people have really like uh, dove in and embraced it. Um, and uh, you know, our developers are, are doing really well. Yeah, you know, uh, what, what kind of lessons learned would you share, you know, you, you're sharing in your speak and, you know, talking to your peers, what, what, what kind of things that would you share with them? Uh, I think the biggest thing I'm talking about today is uh, to avoid getting in this trap of trying to find the, the perfect person with the right technical acumen. I think having a foundation is important, but uh, more important is finding people who have empathy for users and learning mindsets and uh, have a really, uh, are able to get out of their comfort zone and learn new things. Uh, building cloud native applications and 12 factor applications are inherently new. Uh, to the DoD effectively, right? So it's funny, we talk about uh, how DevOps is you know, innovative in, in our world when the commercial industry probably scoffs at that, but uh, you know, innovation is defined as the introduction of something new. Uh, it really is innovative in the DoD space to, to work in this way. Uh, so, it, but we're seeing a lot of momentum throughout the services in the DoD, um, and we're really heading in the right direction. Yeah, it, it, great to hear, you know, it, Innovation in government can happen. Yeah. We've done lots of interviews uh, over the last few years uh, to talk about it. Um, anything you'd like to share about like ways that you know your organization or peer organizations uh, are, are moving things forward that people might be surprised to hear about? Uh, I would say the most important thing is it's just finding the right people, right? So uh, a lot of the times uh, we've found that our our most senior leadership in the government is very much interested in innovating and moving things forward in the right way. And there's this innovative innovation ecosystem below that is driving things up. Uh, so it's basically the education that needs to happen at the, the middle level of that, that frozen middle uh, that sometimes can thwart innovation by just like a lack of um, uh, knowledge, I guess, or a lack of um, understanding of what we're doing. So uh, it, we've been on a, you know, a feels like 
um, a parade of uh, education and, and trying to share the things we've learned with other people in the government to, uh, you know, uh, help us remove some of those bureaucratic barriers and just, like, really uh, progress where we need to. All right. Adam, last question I have for you. Something we're all struggling with, the pace of change these days. Mm -hmm. Seems every time you get on a new technology, the, the next one's there. You mentioned, you know, like, well, DevOps we've been talking about for years, but you're getting on. How, how, does, how does your organization look at that? How do you keep up uh, with, with what's happening in the world? Uh, so I think uh, Cloud Foundry is an example or these commercial solutions have helped us do that. Now uh, we say like speed is the new security. We're able to um, be truly agile in that uh, we're able to uh, change and adapt to things uh, as we need to. So I think in the old model, uh, it took us so long to adapt and get things out into the field that uh, change was almost impossible. Uh, whereas in this way of working, we're able to uh, learn things every single day, keep our learning loops very short, uh, and then react to them. So I think it's been uh, a great way to uh, take some of those things we've learned and you know, implement them. Very well. Adam Furtado, really appreciate you sharing the stories from the U.S. Air Force. Fascinating stuff. We'll be back with more coverage here at the Cloud Foundry Summit 2018. I'm Stu Miniman. Thanks for watching theCUBE.